Okay, so we are here today with a friend of mine, Matt Files. And Hello. We are going to be discussing the any questions that we have about Leviathan or doing our best to explain exactly what Leviathan is. So, mm -hmm. Matt, without further ado, do you have any questions about Leviathan? Uh, well, thinking about the Leviathan, there's a lot of questions that could that could come up. Uh, such as, I mean, the primary question regarding the Leviathan is who or what is the identity of this Leviathan? And we, we see multiple verses, such as in Job 41, as well as a couple of the Psalms, uh, including Isaiah, that mention the Leviathan. Uh, and we also see in Job 41, uh, Job 40, the mention of the behemoth as well. Uh, so one Oftentimes, the discussions of Leviathan also include the behemoth, uh, but either way, uh, who are they, what are they, um, and then really, based off of one's view of creation, often also affects what one thinks the Leviathan could be. Um, so, but here's something I have, like, yes, you have to agree, but... Um... Something I'm just going to mention real quick, though, because I do not believe that the behemoth and Leviathan were before the flood. I'm just going to tell you that because behemoth would have been dead already by then. Because everything that was not in the water or on the boat was killed. Mm. We can agree on that, right? Right. Okay, you can um, continue. Yeah, no, I mean, and then ultimately who you take the Leviathan and or behemoth to be referring to might also be uh, expanded a little bit more on what you've just said, it might differentiate that, uh, as well as any other further questions that we might have, so I, whether uh, like time frame or the size, things along those lines would be very dependent on who we think the Leviathan is. Uh, so of the spectrum, generally, what I have seen is usually the Leviathan is either taken to be some sort of a, a crocodile or some sort of dinosaur or or to be some sort of, uh oh, you just you disappeared oh, no, no. for a second. Oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, so either a crocodile, some sort of a dinosaur, or some sort of metaphor for something else, either yes. Satan or other other animals or types of animals yes or so I, in I, some cases possibly kingdoms yeah be, yeah you're right about that but um what i have gotten here about leviathan was that he was just a beast of the sea from mm -hmm. isaiah like i think yeah isaiah and um psalms because it says there goes the ships that there is that leviathan whom that mm -hmm. thou hast made to play in the terrain so basically right. to if um he, he did god didn't want like certain sh ships going across seas though be leviathan's basically there as a obstacle perhaps, or a way perhaps. to to allow certain people to go across them and certain to not mm -hmm. so uh i guess a good question then braxton is uh i've taken up taking some context clues from you you do hold the Leviathan to be a specific uh, animal. Uh, so I, where, where are you landing on? So when it comes to like, the only thing I am only saying it's a specific creature is because it says it right here in like, um, yeah, Isaiah 27, one. In the day of the Lord, the great strong sword will, shall punish Leviathan, that piercing serpent, even Leviathan, that crooked serpent, and he shall slay the dragon that is in the sea. Mm -hmm. that's why i'm saying that because well i'm just saying that because that's what the bible says right now as of what he is right so but then you... again serpent is also a term for something that's crafty and slender well sometimes slender but like crafty something that's crafty intelligent right right uh, so are you taking the leviathan to be a like a special creation of God, like a separate, like not like a, a, a particular type of animal or. Okay. So and, like what you said earlier, it could just mm -hmm. be a metaphor or like, mm -hmm. like um, another word or like another name for the devil, like what mm -hmm. you said earlier. Right. 
but as of right now, I'm thinking it more as a one-time beast, like Jonah and the fish. Like that fish okay. was like a one-time thing. Mm -hmm. So okay. like, because um, there is something here that says um, he will, um, God will basically kill the serpent and feed him to the people. I'm pretty sure. Hold on. Uh, yeah, that, yeah. Was that like, would Isaiah. be Psalm, Psalm 74, I believe. Uh, yeah, Psalm 74, 14, you crushed the heads of the Leviathan, you gave him as food for the creatures of the wilderness. Yeah. So, but that, oh, I I thought, I misread it earlier, but I thought it was going to be like more of, you you crushed it for the food of the people, or for like the people, but apparently, I guess that just shows that we have, there's going to be a hard time figuring out where, what timeline this thing came from. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, and, and of course, I, I'm pulling from the ESV. You might have had a slightly different translation. Uh, so I have a slightly different understanding of who I believe that Leviathan to be uh, than, than yours. So it could be, it's going to be an interesting, interesting discussion, which uh, it's always fun. Uh, so but hey, we over the, yeah. So like we have our opinions. And that, exactly. and then, but we do have a few things that we have that are factual in these verses right right so um uh, over the over the couple of weeks that we've had knowing that we were going to do this and the research i've done i have definitely gone quite a bit back and forth between who i who or what i thought this was whether i thought it was entirely metaphorical whether i thought it was some sort of a dinosaur uh or whether or not i thought it was uh, a, a crocodile. And it's actually interesting. Again, as I've made, mentioned before, depending, usually depending on the view, one's view of creation. Uh, so young earth versus old earth, evolutionary creation or, or naturalism, uh, naturalistic evolution uh, will really depend on, on who or what they believe this Leviathan to be. Obviously, those who, who don't hold to teaching of scripture will just wave it off. And cat, in fact, some some cases they they try to say this is stolen from pagan mythology and such but I, I of course as christians we don't take that and i don't think there's good enough evidence to to support that um and in any case so where i tend to have fallen is i think that leviathan is more of a, a metaphor for our sea creatures that this is not necessarily a a reference to any singular particular animal uh, rather, again, metaphor metaphorically used to as a culmination of something fierce in the sea. So Leviathan, I'm not even going to pretend to announce, try to announce the Hebrew word for Leviathan, but it, it sounds fairly similar. It has the idea of, uh, of a sea monster or dragon. And so when we start looking at the verses, Job 41 certainly has a fairly descriptive understanding of the Leviathan. I'll go back there in, in, in ju just a second. But when we look at like Job 38, it says, let those who curse it, uh, curse it, who curse the day, who are already roused to the Leviathan. We don't particularly know, this doesn't particularly give us a lot of information, um, but moving down to some, some 7414, if you read that verse in context, I'll start at verse 12. It says, yet God, my king, is from of old, working salvation in the midst of the earth. You divided the sea by your might. You broke the heads of the sea monsters on the waters. Now, notice here in verse 13, it uses breaking of heads of sea monsters in the waters. And then verse 14 is that's when we get to you crush the head, heads, plural, of Leviathan. You gave him as food for the creatures of the wilderness. Uh, so that certainly is interesting uh, reference here, uh, crush the heads, plural of Leviathan. And that's right after verse 13 that talk, that pretty much says, says the same thing, which is very common in Hebrew poetry, this sort of repetition of saying the same thing twice, but in a slightly different way. So it's quite possible here that, uh, that this idea of sea monsters is equivalent to Leviathan. And in that case, sea monsters could just a or i.e. Leviathan could really just be representing a, a representative of just fierce monsters, fierce animals in the seas that might have people might have not fully understood at the time. Um, and it may or may not include some of the animals that we're familiar with now. Um, but on the other hand, some have interpreted these verses to be referring to 
uh, Egypt and what God had done to the Egyptians, that the Leviathan here is referring to the Egyptians being drowned in the Red Sea. Uh, so the Egyptians are referenced to, to the Leviathan and, and, and sea monsters. I think that's a little bit harder to kind of understand, but then just the idea of you split open springs and brook, you dried up ever flowing streams. Uh, we do have reference here to the wilderness, not entirely sure where, why food for the wilderness, unless of course, this is referring to the spoils that, that Israel brought out of Egypt. Uh, and but in both translate both understandings here, Leviathan is is referring to some sort of symbolic, either symbolic for a symbolism, either symbolic for a nation, Egypt, or could be symbolic for just large sea animals in general. Then going to Psalm one hundred four twenty six, uh, it it says, "There go the ships and Leviathan which you formed to play in it." Uh, again, not a lot of information regarding Leviathan, but in this case, it doesn't necessarily mean that Leviathan is dangerous. Uh, if we go up to verse 25, uh, here is the sea, great and wide, which teems with creatures and innumerable, living, living things both small and great. And then again, we go to Leviathan, which you formed to play in it. So again, this Leviathan could could be referencing to just a number of large sea creatures with uh, within the waters and then finally isaiah 27 1 is a very interesting reference to the leviathan it says in that day the lord uh, with his hard and great and strong sword will punish leviathan the fleeing serpent leviathan leviathan the twisting serpent and he will slay that dragon that is in the sea uh, now, it's, it's refer, referring to in that day. Now, usually when scripture is talking about in that day, sort of talking about like some sort of eschaton, sort of end times, like God is, and, and the context here also, I believe, is, is God delivering Israel. So referring to this future day in which God will deliver Israel. And so some have uh, equated Leviathan here with, with potentially with Satan, which was has been brought up before, and so again, Leviathan is usually is trying to be is being used metaphorically as something fierce or dangerous that people would be afraid of, and so this defeat of Satan as being analogous to to Leviathan would wouldn't make a lot of sense. I think so, the so yeah, I see what you're talking mm -hmm. about. With it could be an analogy for just another name for Satan. But mm -hmm. like going back to what you were saying earlier, though, yeah, it you think that there's a good chance that this probably fits into better as in the revelation times, like into into the future more of. Uh, well, not in, in in particular. I think the Leviathan in general is referencing to a reference to large sea creatures, perhaps those who are seen to be dangerous. Uh, and so that's why it's then applied in Isaiah 27 to Satan, but not that it, it's only applied to Satan, but rather the term is broad, and, and because of the broad usage of the term, is then applied to Satan. Like so, for example, if Satan I see what you Satan's mean by called, that. I see what you mean by that because in Revelation, I'm pretty sure he's talked about as being a dragon, and two, mm -hmm. he has also taken on many forms, like a serpent. Which is Lion. one of his apparently as if it's one of his favorite forms because they are crafty beings who can get away with stuff easily. And yeah, he has taken form of dragon and a serpent, and it references both of those. Right. Or at the very least, he is is, is said to be like these things. Uh and and so it certainly seems like especially in isaiah 27 1 that the ver that the term leviathan isn't meant to be taken literal so even if you understood for example joe 41 to be talking about a literal creature i don't think isaiah uh 27 1 is talking about a literal creature rather is referring to perhaps satan and using some sort of uh, a creature or type of creature that would that one could uh use as an analogy of satan so for example satan's is is sometimes called like a roaring lion uh but of course we're not saying that satan is a lion in, in that case but just that he is like a lion 
Uh, so perhaps in this Isaiah passage, it's just it's, we're seeing a comparison of Satan as as Leviathan. Um, yeah, so we I see, see this. I see what you mean by that because, like, yeah, it could be like an analogy for the, this devil. But we also got to take into terms that sometimes he, the devil, has taken forms of actual living creatures. Mm -hmm. And yeah. like, for example, um, it's not necessary in a way. It's not necessarily the devil, but it also is. But with the Antichrist, because the Antichrist is basically just some other form of the devil. And he right. has also taken form of a snake. So it could be a, a metaphor or whatever you pronounce it. I'm sorry. I'm bad at work. Yeah, no, no, you're good. You're good. Yeah. Or it could be an actual beast. Mm -hmm. I think what is difficult, and it's the passage that a lot of people sort of point to is Job 41. Job 41 definitely seems to be talking about a particular animal it's quite descriptive now this verse these set of well this chapter the whole chapter is about the leviathan uh it, it's not e not an easy chapter for anybody's views uh because we know uh, you know most of the descriptions like the teeth and the scales and all that stuff that that could go with quite a number of animals but where things get quite interesting is when it when he starts talking about uh, spitting fire. So verse uh, verse 18 of Job 41, it says, he sneezes flat, flash forth light and his eyes are like the eyelids of the dawn. Out of his mouth go flaming torches, sparks of fire leap forth. Out of his nostrils come forth smoke as from a boiling pot and burning uh, rushes. His breath kindles coal and a flame comes forth from his mouth. Uh, and we know of no creature living or in the past, present or in the past that can breathe fire. The closest thing that we have would be the bombardier beetle, uh, which spews a, a, a chemical combination that's, I think, about 100 degrees Celsius, if I remember correctly. Uh, and that's the closest thing that we have. Now, there are some some animals that people have tried to say, well, this could have been the case. So uh, for example, you have the Sakasukas, which is a, a giant alligator uh, considered a, a prehistoric, uh, but if obviously those who hold to young earth creationism uh, would not call it a prehistoric, uh, but- Wait, What was it called uh, again? Sakasukas. I might be saying it wrong. Uh, S A R O S U C H U S. Uh, this is a a a large alligator, about um, uh, it's approximately forty feet long and about the size of a whale shark, and Oof. weighed about fifteen ton tons, which is about seven tons heavier than an elephant. So this would have been a huge alligator, and we have we have bones of this thing and one of the interesting things about it is it does have in its nostrils a a a, a cavity a, a bone um and so some have concluded that quite possibly this could have been an area where it could have produced something similar to the bombardier beetle only problem is we we don't actually don't actually know now of course you have also the stories of of knights slaying dragons and where have some have interpreted uh these stories as entirely made up or mostly made up just to make themselves look good others have said mm, well quite possibly they are refer they were referring at least some of them were referring to real sightings of real animals and there's been other cases where people have claimed to 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 see some sort of fire breathing animal uh but the problem is we just have no physical evidence of a fire breathing animal um and so one could if one understood this to be literal uh then we have no physical evidence of this if one takes it metaphorical we are still left with what does this actually stand in for what is it referring to so some have alluded those holding to the metaphorical position, some have alluded to the fire being how someone feels in the presence of this animal. So it, uh, the, the fierceness of the animal makes it as if, uh, as if they might as well be breathing fire 
uh, whereas others have alluded to just its its fierceness and its bite, that it's like being sprayed with fire. Uh, there are, of course, some animals, uh, insects, that their sting or bite, uh, they say that it's it it feels like being burned by fire. Uh, so uh, so Job 41 is, is certainly interesting. I still tend to take the metaphorical view here that it's ref that Leviathan is a reference to uh, a, new, a number of large water creatures or sea creatures, and that this is just a sort of culmination of, of, of ways to describe at least some of these creatures. Uh, but it's trying to trying to develop this picture of of this the scary sea creature that again could be representing many of other sea creatures that they might have come across. And again, the purpose of this passage in Job is to is, is God is teaching Job a lesson, and He's just saying, you know, the you know, if this is metaphorical again, you know, we we could reinterpret this and saying god is saying to Job, you know these mighty sea creatures that you don't even stand to be you, you you're everyone's too afraid to be around you're not going to want to touch them you know these they're scary uh you can't hardly touch them uh uh you know what i made them and i can control them you these creatures you can't control it's interesting the beginning of job chapter one uh god talks about like you're not going to this is not an animal that you can tame. You're not going to put it on a leash or ride it. This is not like like some of the other animals that we're familiar that we can tame. The, you can't tame this leviathan, and and certainly we can't tame most sea creatures, especially the fiercest one. Like trying to train train a shark or crocodile is virtually impossible unless you do it from birth, and even then, a a, a crocodile that you've handled every single day from from birth can still turn on you uh, and so with this case uh god again the god is just pointing out like it, you're not you can't even you can't even control those or contest with these creatures how dare you try to contest with me uh, i i created them yeah, see, i control them i have to agree with you on some of that because like yeah. like you said um it's a metaphor because it could just be like a metaphor for you can't even deal with the people. You can't even treat the people around you correctly. How are you supposed to be able to tame or even defeat a beast like this? Mm -hmm. But um, uh, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so with with your question regarding like the size or time frame. Uh, if with me, it would be hard to answer some of those questions just because well, let's, I, I let's look through would... as if it was an actual beast. Okay. Like, let's okay. look through the, let's like think about for a moment that if it was an actual creature. Okay. What timeline would it have been best to fit in? Well, the interesting thing is Job was considered one of the earliest books of the Bible perhaps even taking place before Moses. Uh, and, and we see in, in uh, which passage is it? My, in Psalm 24, 14, for example, it talks about, yet my God, my King is from old, working salvation in the midst of the waters. Uh, well, no, that might not be the one. The, the, I'd have to take a little bit uh, of time to, to spread, but the idea here is that the Leviathan has this idea of being being a, an old creature. Uh, and so it's interesting if Job, Job is considered again, being really early. So this could be referring to a, a creature that Job might have, might've been familiar with and stories might've been passed down about uh, which would might explain some of the other passages, but it could be a creature that no longer exists, uh, but did exist during Job's time frame. Uh, so real quick though, so I just remembered. Um, sometimes, a lot of the time, the Bible tends to use words that make it seem like it's an actual what it actually looks like or what it is, but it would just say mean like like it tends to use metaphors a lot. 
Right. You especially in Job forty one. I believe there's 40, I'd have to look it up, the statistics again, uh, the number again. I believe there's 40 uses of the word as and like, which are uh, metaphor words with and simile words within the chapter of, of 41 of Job. Uh, so even if one were to take overall the picture of Leviathan here, literally, it's this passage is still filled with metaphors and similes trying to explain what this creature would look like. Yeah, so um, I was thinking about asking the, how big was it? But even if we, even if we had a measurement in the Bible, we still would be very unsure of it because measurements have changed over time. Mm -hmm. And also, um, it, the Bible does me, does not mention anything about his size, but um, but then again, um, something I did think about was sometimes Leviathan was just like people like like a metaphor, like you said, was it's mainly just people's fears and like 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 sea th stories, like you know how people would come back from sea and have these crazy stories. Mm -hmm. It could just be like one of those but at the same time is since this is in the book of job yeah as well job has tend to um t like psalms no psalms has been more of a a book of um poems and songs so that we could see like as an as in like a a boat song like something like sailors would sing but at the same time is um, Isaiah and Job have both provided it as being an actual creature because mm -hmm. of how things are worded. It makes it sound as if it's a being that will die. So this is a very interesting topic. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah, uh, it's interesting when you're doing research uh, it, many people most that i've done i mean i've seen some who who have a lot of conviction what they believe it to be uh but most people usually generally end their discussions of leviathan going this is what we think it is but we're not entirely sure uh so it, it's certainly fun to to speculate and what we think uh the leviathan could be uh but again i think the the point of these passages in job and, and psalm and isaiah is ultimately the power and sovereignty of God, especially in Job. God is 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 taking a lot of time saying, Job, who how how dare you question me? I am God. And you know, you weren't here during creation. I did all these things. I created all these animals. I control these things. Uh, you don't really have the place to question uh, what I what I do. And and you know. Thankfully, we have a good we we have a a good God that is holy and just, and so we don't have to be fearful of it. But it reminds me of the passage in Romans nine, where uh, where Paul says, "What is the part of the pot to say to the potter, why have you made me this way? Uh, you know, who are we to tell God or to complain about God about His creation or what He does with us? Uh, he is God; we are His." and uh god will choose what he he does with us and uh, again he is good and he is just but we are his to do with as he pleases uh and, and that's really the main focal point i believe of, of job 41 and job 3 8 job is basically cursing the day of his birth uh because he feels so bad and so the idea of job 3 8 where it says let those curse it who curse the day who are ready to rouse up Leviathan, basically saying, just as those people who know they're going to die, that they might as well saying, you know, I'm, 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 I'm going to die by doing this. Uh, so what, likewise, like what you just said, though, um, mm -hmm. reminded me of something you said earlier, but it's basically okay. like, like, as of right here, it's one of those metaphors, because like Leviathan could just be a metaphor for a giant beast mm -hmm. that like, because usually the sea is calm. The ocean is a calm ocean. But like when mm -hmm. they say Leviathan, it makes it like a like a large beast that will make the seas unsettled, like cause giant waves. 
and storms because of the, the chaos that's going on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it definitely is something that people are afraid of. I don't think it would be the extent of, of like the picture that's behind you. Uh, yeah, I just did uh, that for funny, funniness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but again, uh, the the point of Job three a is 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 to to bring out the fact that Job was like you know I I I, I feel like I, I might as well be going up against an unstoppable creature. Uh, and then uh, some seventy four fourteen again this idea of God's power and sovereignty and His provision for His people and slightly different if you view this to be about Israel or, or, or whatnot, uh, but nevertheless still pointing out God's power and sovereignty and, and movement of history and, and provision. And then Psalm 104, uh, again, God's power and his creativeness and uh, what, he, what he's done, a, a praising of, uh, of who he is. And, uh, and then lastly, Isaiah 27, again, God's power and that in the end, God is going to prevail uh, there's nothing that can defeat him, nothing that can stop his plans. God's will will prevail. Evil will be stomped out, uh, and God's people will be rescued ultimately. And so that's the hope that we have, in, and ultimately in Christ, is that no matter how bad things may get, no matter how Satan seems to be winning, no matter how how things are, God will prevail. God is contr in control. And ultimately, we will see salvation either here or in the life to come. And so that's what our hope is in. Our hope is in the, the goodness, the power, and the sovereignty of God. Precisely. Like, something I want to add on to that is, um, like, with this whole thing, what this whole thing is about is figuring out what was a metaphor or an actual beast. Because even if it was an actual beast, that's just basically god proving his power by killing a beast such as this right right and so um only god knows what leviathan was actually meant to be right and um going back to what you said just a few minutes ago mm -hmm. um it's more of a kind of like a metaphor to do show what the true like the beast like the the quote-unquote beast of basically the chaos that mm -hmm. well not really much is chaos but like um a metaphor like you said earlier is what we probably see it better as more likely as to be but in all in all something i did think about is it could be both like the reason is the whole term of the term Leviathan was because it was also a beast. Mm -hmm. Like I'm full on with you and the whole it being a um, metaphor. Mm -hmm. But we can also put it into appliance that it could be both because sometimes God tends to use terminology of like an animal. Mm -hmm. Like for example, like laziness as like of a sloth. Mm -hmm. or like crafty like a serpent he right. uses a lot of animal terminology to referring to actions of humans mm -hmm. like laziness right right which is exactly what i think i at the very least the isaiah passage is doing uh but yeah no i mean it, it certainly could be the case that uh there was a creature that job would have been familiar with uh, a specific creature that Job would have been familiar with, whether a dinosaur or some other animal, uh, like the Sarasuchus or something else, that would have been in, within his time frame that he was familiar with, but then ultimately uh, provided uh, an opportunity for a metaphor for future generations that might have been somewhat familiar with the stories of this creature, but might have, not have actually seen it. Okay. So, um, quick question. Is yeah. there, so we have come to the conclusion that we have some information, but we don't know a hundred percent. 
Right. Which we we are humans. We are not meant to know 100% of everything. So we are going to leave it as what you said earlier. That is just a metaphor for um, like what you said earlier. I forgot. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. But it's like a metaphor. We're going to leave it as a metaphor. Is there anything you would like to tell our audience? Uh, well, uh, I, I'm not sure what uh, you have mentioned in your introduction, uh, but again, my name is Matthew Faust, and uh, I, I have a degree in philosophy of religion from Southeastern Baptist Theological Seminary. Uh, I, I focus on apologetics or so defending the faith. Uh, so you can find me at uh, Faith and Knowledge uh, you can also find me at Control C, which I'm hoping will be somewhere in the description section. You can most likely uh, pin me there, uh, and and I also have YouTube channels, Faith and Knowledge Control C. But you also find me on Facebook, Instagram, even TikTok. Uh, so uh, search me out, and I'll be happy to. Uh, if you send me a question, send me a message. I'd be happy to answer you or put you in the right direction with somebody who could answer that question. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Yeah, yeah, that's right there. Maybe right there, right there. So I have one last question before we leave. Okay. Would you be interested, not anytime soon, but interested mm -hmm. in doing something like this, but for another beast of the Bible or quote unquote beast? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I, I, I think we mentioned the behemoth, but there's also reference to, I think the unicorn, um there's also the 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 surrogates or something like that the winged angels with the like the the six winged the angels yeah sephirims yeah there's also those okay. things and then you have the uh reference to the, the um is it nephilim or I, i'm i'm my mind's uh, growing a blank right now, the 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 reference to the sons of God uh, going to the daughters of men and uh, having them uh, oh, mighty oh, men yeah, of old. Yeah, those. Uh, that's the, an interesting discussion. Yeah, and then last but not least, there was also um, one other um, creature. I think I'm trying to remember what it was, but um. I mean, and granted, you could always go into Revelation and, and have fun with trying oh, yeah. to identify the different beasts and, and, and creatures and within Revelation or within Daniel as well. Uh, so uh, this, uh, we, this certainly a number, a plethora of, of beasts that we could. And we could don't forget about. about one of the most iconic beasts of the Bible. In technicality, the weird thing is, is it a human or a demon? Because if you think about it, giants, like Goliath. I'm pretty sure Goliath was like what you said, though, the spawn of, like, mm. because like what you just said with the spawn yeah. of um, yeah. demons coming to earth and that the stuff. God and the daughters of so men. we could do something like that if you're interested. We could, we could. Well, uh, hit me up. We'll try to uh, schedule a time to do uh, to do a video on on, on those. Uh, so I'd be happy to to continue continue doing these discussions from time to time. Well, thanks for coming and having a wonderful time with this. Thanks for having and me. Thanks for going over this. Absolutely. See you next time on Poi Studios and um, what's your channel? <laughs> Control C and and faith knowledge. Okay, faith and knowledge. Okay. Yes,